Hello, welcome back to Blackjack. I almost forgot that there was a death battle today. I'm at my parents' house, as you can tell, with the fancy goings on and everything. And um, I'm sorry for how dark it is here. I just can't figure out why my screen flickers every time I turn off the lights. So, uh, I mean, it happened last week. What I hope we don't get a repeat of from last week is the crashing. Okay, so let's just get right into this, shall we? The different pantheons of gods and goddesses have always been rife with conflict, and oh. these heavenly oh. wars can last for centuries. Like with Thor, Norse champion of Asgard and yeah. son of Odin. And Wonder Woman, Greek warrior of the Amazons and daughter of Zeus. He's wears an ambush stick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. This is the Realm Eternal, root of the world tree and noblest of the nine dimensions, Asgard. Like a protector for your butt? Shush, shush, shush. Asgard. Since ancient times, this colorful realm has been inhabited by warriors so powerful, many believe them to be immortal deities. And they sort of were, but being immortal in Asgard is a funny thing. See, every few thousand years, these fellas go through a little apocalyptic event where everybody dies. Then they are born anew with only vague memories of their previous lives. This is the cataclysmic event known as Ragnarok. And Asgard's newest king, the Allfather Odin, was determined to break this cycle. So he fathered the best damn warrior the realms had ever seen. The mighty Thor. Thor spent most of his life living among his people and defending his realm from its enemies. And he was good at it. Like, really good. He's their tank and DPS all rolled into one when it comes to raiding other realms. And boy, does he look the part. This guy is... 640 pounds. Nice. <laughs> six feet six inches of pure muscle and possibly lead because he somehow weighs 640 pounds. Yes. Thor was trained by the best in Asgard and has proven his mettle across multiple worlds. He helped found the Avengers and has defeated everything from giants to demons to other gods. As a real-life god, Thor is super strong, super fast, and super durable. And even on those rare occasions when he does get hurt, he patches up real quick with his healing factor. And of course, being the god of thunder lets him control lightning and even the earth itself. But Thor isn't complete without his iconic arsenal. He wears the Belt of Strength, which doubles his already impressive might. And he swings around the most awesome tiny little hammer you've ever seen. Mjolnir is an ancient weapon. 65 million years ago, it was forged by dwarves by harnessing a star. Its construction was so intense, it caused the star to explode, and its fiery remains eradicated the dinosaurs. Yeah. Talk about metal! Speaking of metal, Mjolnir is forged from Uru, an extremely durable iron-like ore that is highly susceptible to enchantment. Mjolnir in particular is enchanted to house a cosmic storm powerful enough to shake black holes. And yes, the wielders of Mjolnir can access the storm's powers, including levitation and control over weather. Never wanted anything so bad in my life. Unfortunately, only those the hammer deems worthy can actually wield it, or even pick it up for that matter. You must be pure of heart and noble of mind, or else it won't even budge. Well, lucky for Thor, he's worthy of adding Mjolnir's awesome power to his own. And with their powers combined, nothing can stop him. Thor has easily tagged Quicksilver, who at his best can run around 670 million miles per hour. And Thor can move even faster than that when his hammer is dragging him around. Yeah, that's a thing. Thor doesn't really fly on his own in the same way people like Superman or Captain Marvel do. Instead, he literally chucks his hammer as hard as he can and hangs on for dear life as it takes him for a ride. Thor has said Mjolnir is fast enough to reach the edge of the universe in 60 seconds. This means it can travel at least 350 trillion miles per hour, or over 500,000 times the speed of light. Don't let go, Goldilocks. Hitting pavement at that speed might hurt even you. Yeah, he'd be fine. He can withstand a dip in the sun, where it can be over 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. 
And while he was knocked unconscious, he did survive a bomb capable of planet busting equal to a force of over 53 quadrillion megatons of TNT. I'm more impressed that he lifted this giant ass snake! Look at that thing! The Midgard Serpent is massive, capable of wrapping around the entire Earth twice. It stretches nearly 900 miles wide and 50,000 miles long. By comparing it to the largest living snakes, the 550-pound green aconda, we can estimate the Midgard Serpent weighs about 17 trillion tons. Hold on, Wiz. I know my snakes, and it looks like that Mudguard Serpent is actually constricting the Earth. By squeezing prey, a snake can apply pressure 16 times its normal weight. So Thor didn't just lift a really heavy snake, he outmatched 272 trillion tons of force. Uh, that is correct, Boomstick. Goddamn right it is. It is important to stress the unbelievable power Thor possesses. So much so that in fights with other godly beings, whole worlds can shatter. If it ever comes to it, he can even enter a state of warrior's madness. While he loses some control doing this, his power increases tenfold. <laughs> Hang on a second. He just called someone a false god, but didn't... Wasn't it... I'm more familiar with the movies. Wasn't it that he didn't know that people were calling Asgardians gods until he got to Earth because they don't really see themselves as such? I don't know. It just seems like he doesn't really have the um, resources to be calling someone a false god. Why did we put this guy up against Raiden again? Well, Thor's cocky attitude has put him in all kinds of trouble. He's even lost Mjolnir's power more than once as a result. Yeah, the hammer isn't invulnerable, and if Thor's holding on to it, its enchantment can even be tricked. Like that one time the Hulk used his own hammer against him by moving his arm. Why, you hit yourself! So to teach <laughs> Thor a lesson in humility, Odin banished him to Earth, transforming him into a handicapped human. You call that a handicap? That's a limp! I'm over here with a friggin' shotgun for a leg, and I'm not even allowed to park in those special parking spaces! <laughs> Still, it turns out sending Thor to Earth was all part of Odin's plan to alter the cycle of Ragnarok, as such a thing had never been done before. And it worked! 4,000 years after the previous Ragnarok, Armageddon was stopped for good, and the gods were free! All thanks to Thor! and a giant time-traveling floating sentient eyeball, but mostly Thor. Can't make this stuff up. I accept your surrender. <laughs> Legend hat. Yeah, come on, if you're gonna go up against a guy wielding a hammer, and you're made of dry mud, you want use a little... As it that lost among the waves sits a solitary island called Themyscira, shrouded in secrecy and inhabited solely by women. Hey Wiz, guess what's my new number one vacation spot? Hello, this. Despite their paradise isle far from civilization, the women of Themyscira are more dangerous than you'd think. They are Amazons, immortal warriors created by the Olympian gods. Their mission? To spread the peace and justice of the gods to a barbarian world. And ship anything to you for free within two days. If you pay an annual fee. But a bunch of centuries later, they were kind of out of the loop. These chicks had never even heard of shotguns before. Until the day a military plane crashed near the island. Determined to reconnect with the world and establish peace once again, the Amazons held a tournament to select a representative. The final test requiring each lady to block a bullet from just a couple yards away. Damn, they don't mess around. The winner was one of their youngest, a brave woman known simply as Diana. And that's how she became the Wonder Woman. Due to her warrior heritage, Wonder Woman was trained from a very young age in just about every okay. aspect of combat you can imagine. Again, I'm going to call bullshit. Six foot tall, pure muscle, and 130 pounds. Because what else is she going to do on that island? She's a master with swords, axes, spears, bows, shields, yeah, hell, and pretty much anything that isn't a gun. Her Amazon physiology grants her super strength, super speed, heightened wisdom, and the ability to heal from most wounds almost instantly. And she can fly, just like Superman. How else do you think she'd get around? An invisible jet? 
That's stupid! How do you even remember where you parked it? To further improve her deadliness, she carries a rather unique arsenal, among which are her iconic bracelets of submission. Ah, that sounds like some weird BDSM shit. Well, they kind of were, but the universe has been reset more than enough times to change all that, thank God. Right. Anyway, those bracelets are her greatest tool for defense. Forged by the smith god Hephaestus using the remains of Zeus's legendary Aegis shield, the bracelets are impervious to nearly anything, including gunfire, demon lightning, and Kryptonian heat vision, which can be hotter than the sun. They can summon Zeus's lightning, or even the indestructible Aegis they were made from. To avoid collateral damage, the bracelets also suppress some of Diana's strength. Taking them off vastly increases her godly power. Oh, and she can use them to summon weapons like her magic sword. Also forged by Hephaestus, this sword's edge is so sharp that it can slice through microscopic atoms. This means a precision strike from Wonder Woman can cut through nearly any material. Man, this asbestos god makes some top-notch stuff. Wonder if he does commissions. Well, he's not responsible for Diana. I see a typo. Restricts the... Yeah, right there. They... Capitalize the I there. They're not supposed to do that. And his final weapon, the Lasso of Truth. This unbreakable whip has the power to make anybody it touches tell the truth. Bad news for any cheating boyfriends she might have. What other depraved thoughts must you be thinking? God, your daughter's got a nice rack. Shall I kill him now, my queen? Of course, she doesn't need weapons to prove her awesome combat skills. According to Batman, Diana is the greatest melee fighter in the world, which is no small feat in a universe with people like Karate Kid, Deathstroke, and Batman himself. Did you say the Karate Kid? Man, Daniel sounds really moved up in the world. The point is, Wonder Woman is a master martial artist who's trained all her life. And while she has no official birth date, we do know she was born during the age of the Roman Empire specifically when they employed centurions. Including the additional time she spent fighting in Valhalla before going back in time, this means Wonder Woman must be about 3,000 years old. All things considered, she looks pretty damn good for her age. And that's more than enough time to become a master ass-kicker. It also helps that she's pretty darn quick. She's kept pace with Superman and defeated the speedster Professor Zoom while blind. At one point, Wonder Woman was battling an ancient god who had fragmented himself into trillions of pieces, each spread to different corners of the universe. And while he summoned his pieces back at faster than light speed, Wonder Woman was able to stand in his way and block all of them. That's insane! I mean, she's moving so fast, there's like a bunch of her. Moving thousands of times the speed of light can do that. In fact, she's moving so fast, she's probably breaking all manners of quantum physics. She's also ridiculously strong. She punched Doomsday into literal dust and helped pull the Earth around. The force needed to move an object out of the sun's orbit equals around one thousandth of the object's mass, including the Earth itself. Assuming Wonder Woman was pulling her fair share, this means she can lift 2.2 quintillion tons. Huh. And Grandpappy Boomstick always told me women were the weaker sex. I don't see him lifting a third of the Earth. She's also incredibly tough. Nuclear explosions hardly even face her. Oh yeah, she punched a warhead and tanked it point blank. And then one day, Superman, who can see atoms, decided to split one to test her magic sword. Surprise, surprise, it literally blew up in their faces. <laughs> Waggy antics. Even more impressive was her fight with Zoom, in which she took several light speed punches, which, according to her fellow Justice League member The Flash, hit like a white dwarf star. That would equal two billion megatons of force. Unfortunately, Wendy's not invincible. She's got her own kryptonite, and it's a lot more common than radioactive alien rocks. Her durability holds up well against almost everything, except for piercing weapons. Which just seems like an unacceptable weakness when you're that strong. Knives, swords, spears, any kind of blade will do the trick. But especially bullets, which is probably why she's gotten so good at blocking them with those bracelets. Unfortunately for swordsmen and sharpshooters, Diana doesn't go down easily. In fact, a good stabbing is more than likely just gonna piss her off. And that's when you learn just how dangerous Wonder Woman can really be. All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once okay, and for all. But first, all this talk of godly people make makes this limited time yeah. off cooking his meal to eat. Dot com slash back. Okay, what I want to talk about here. Um, 
It seems like most of their feats from their previous battles, um, it seems almost like they're starting fresh here. I mean, they they showed the part where Thor beat Raiden. Uh, but, um, other than that, it, it seems like they're just dealing with whole new lists of feats here. Like, um, immunity to piercing weapons and all of that kind of stuff. Um, it's making it sound... But, well, okay, Thor has more overall experience, but it gets reset every few thousand years. So I'm wondering if they're, cause they they're talking about how after Ragnarok they only have vague ideas of their previous lives, vague memories, but it's not saying if that translates to experience on the battlefield or anything like that. Um, Gosh, I honestly don't know. I mean, if she's uh, weak to piercing weapons, but he has a hammer, and obviously it's not going to be a piercing weapon unless it gets shattered, which apparently it can't be unless it can. Oh, these comics are so full of plot contrivances and all of that. Oh, they, they said that um, something about her weapons could be hotter than the surface of the sun, which he can survive. Um, they, they made, I don't know, it was very interesting phrasing, but the thing about um, punching like a white dwarf star just seems like it was hyperbole that they're going to take seriously. So, because I don't think Flash would have experience with actual white dwarf stars, would he? See, I'm mostly familiar with DC animated. Okay? That, like, Batman animated, all of that stuff, everything in that timeline up to uh, Batman Beyond um, is really my expertise there. And even then, I'm not as familiar with Beyond as I should be. Um, it's been a while since I watched Static Shock, all of that stuff. Um, yes, I hear you, Athena. I'm making a video, okay? All right, so anyway, though, I think that's pretty much... Um, comic book battles, to me, are generally going to be anyone's guess, just because they're so... <sighs> they're so dependent on a whole bunch of different types of storytelling. They're dependent on a whole bunch of people telling that story. Um, they're dependent on things varying from issue to issue, much less incarnation to incarnation. Um... Steve looked like Officer Nanu. <laughs> okay, let's go. No man can enter the Mascara unannounced. Stand down, wayward maiden. No, no, no. This sort of thing never turns out well for women like yourself. Oh. oh. I don't think you've ever known a woman like me. Fight! <laughs> Incredible. Time to stop holding back, Diana. Yeah! <laughs> 
such reckless abandon or misguided fear. Ah! Feel how Somebody's been watching too much Game of Thrones. Thor and Wonder Woman matched each other in some surprising ways. Their weapons were enchanted, their years of experience were similar, and even their super modes did almost the same sort of thing. But Lady Wonder had a couple big things going for her, like her speed. Sure, Thor's fast enough to tag Quicksilver, and his travel speed with Mjolnir is just stupid fast. But Wonder Woman's shown that she's even more stupid fast in combat over and over again. Such as when she blocked trillions of god shards flying at her from the edges of the universe, most likely faster than any speed Mjolnir was capable of. She was even able to catch Zoom in her lasso, despite how he wasn't just running ahead of her in physical space, but he was also ahead of her in time. Wrap your noggin around that one. Thor's durability was greater than Wonder Woman's, but the difference in strength was a different story. In fact, when comparing their earth and snake feats, she was 8,000 times stronger than him. But the final nail in Thor's coffin was their choice of weaponry. Mjolnir may have been tough for Diana to defend against, but it couldn't exploit her